All right, today we're finally gonna talk about something that is not a bag. And what I've got right here is my 2020 Toyota 4Runner TRD Off-Road. So I got this uh, right at the end of 2020, I wanna say December timeframe. Bought it right after my most recent deployment, uh, coming back from Iraq. So I had that you know deployment money burning a hole in my pocket. And basically what we're gonna do is go over the very few mods that Nick and I have done to it so that we can capture what it's like right now and then as we progress as we get more mods for it you know you will be able to track that progress and share it with you guys so arguably the most important mod that we've made so far is swapping out the stock grill for the i think it's just like the trd pro grill so as you can see got the you know blacked out toyota emblem right there and then we also threw in some raptor lights which just overall make the whole front of the car or truck or whatever you want to call this thing a lot cleaner than what you get when you first buy it. So overall, as far as like install goes for this, I think it took us maybe two hours to get the whole thing mounted, lights and everything. Uh, we aren't like the most car savvy dudes. So all we really did was watch a couple of YouTube videos of how to like wire the actual like Raptor lights and then taking off the original grill and mounting this. But as far as like difficulty, like one out of 10, I'm saying maybe like a two. So this is, if you just got a 4Runner and it's not a TRD Pro, I'm thinking maybe you should do this like ASAP. And I just want to touch on it real quick. Every single one of these mods that we've done, it hasn't just been Nick and I, we've always had like another buddy or two. So it does help having a couple extra guys with different like experience levels trying to figure out how to slap some of this stuff on. The lights were a little tricky just cause I wasn't that comfortable messing with wires. But like I said, after watching a few YouTube videos, we were able to mount mine pretty quickly and then my buddy uh he's got a trd pro he also bought some raptor lights so we were able to install his pretty quickly like i want to say 20 minutes we did his uh but he's just got the three across they look pretty clean if i'm being honest but Aren't uh they white too i don't think they're white oh, no they're white yeah no i think they're yeah same as same as this Amber. just the three across but yeah it helps having a couple extra buddies because yeah you got guys holding lights you know, flashlights, all that junk. You guys know what I'm talking about. So just moving from front to back, next up we have these ditch lights that we mounted. This is actually, yeah, the most recent mod that we've made. So the ditch lights themselves are from just like Amazon. And then they didn't come with brackets or like these mounting, you know, harnesses. So we got those from Victory 4x4. And I think most of uh, the rest of the mods are from them. For the, the Pro Grill, we don't really remember where we got that from, but I want to say it was like 130 bucks. The lights themselves were like, what, 60? Those lights were like 40 bucks. $40 for these <laughs> lights. <laughs> so this, so far, this hasn't been expensive. Uh, and then the actual brackets were like, yeah, what? A hundred. hundred dollars. Okay, so we paid more for the brackets <laughs> than the lights themselves. And then we also had to pick up like a generic uh, wiring harness from AutoZone. And that was like $25. Yeah. So far, this has been the most difficult like modification that we've done. I don't know what it was, why we were having so much trouble, but I wanna say this is like a four hour, five hour day. It got to the point where it was raining, the sun went down, we had headlamps, lights mounted everywhere, trying to like, you know, run the wiring harness from the lights, connecting them in the middle, then, you know, attaching them to the battery. Like I said, we're not the most car savvy dudes. Uh, so if you're doing something like this, like ditch lights, or you got some, you know, super sick light bar up top, you might want to find somebody that knows what they're doing. I say that because after we thought we had it all, you know, set in stone, there was twice afterward, uh, in a span of like a month where I was doing things to the truck, close the hood, car wouldn't turn on. It turns out we just left a, like a bolt, like a little bit loose but I was losing my mind thinking we had done something terrible to this car. Uh, but yeah, so ditch lights, I like them a lot. I like how they look. These ones in particular, they were supposed to be like yellow, like amber. Uh, I'll, I'll throw some B-roll in there, but you'll see they're not actually amber. They're, they're a little green. So I will say for the lights themselves, you're kind of getting what you pay for. I'm gonna rock them for a while because they are super bright. You know, they'll get the job done whenever we're doing anything like in just complete darkness, but uh, they're not 
they were advertised as amber, but they are not. All right, yeah, so uh, Nick, Nick picked me up a set of these sequential turn signals for the mirrors for my birthday just last year. And, you know, we were gonna have like a Saturday, we were gonna mount them, took off all the stuff for the, uh, the mirror, and it turns out there's no internal wiring or anything to uh, install those turn signals. So we looked it up and I guess the TRD off-road, just like the basic TRD off-road trim, just doesn't come with like all that wiring already in it. I don't remember, but the TRD off-road premium and definitely the TRD Pro have that stuff already in there. But we were definitely a little surprised to find that <laughs> the wires on the you know turn signals had nothing to go into. So we swapped those out for the ditch lights. So next up, I've got the Victory 4x4 full length or whatever you want to call it roof rack this was actually the very first mod that i bought i bought this in tandem with the uh the ladder on the back which you'll see in a second this to me was like the first step into like upgrading the truck like i'm going down that road of turning it into like not just an off-road vehicle but something that i can basically do whatever with i think when i first got that the intent was to do like cross-country trip load up all kinds of gear and junk because of COVID and all that junk, it didn't end up happening, but I have the option. And I've used it for a few camping trips. And honestly, just having it now, I know that no matter what, if I get kayaks, canoes, like anything crazy, like roam cases, I can just slap them up top and I'm ready to go. So as far as cost goes, I bought, like I said, I bought the rack and the ladder together. And I think in total, it came out to be about 1500 bucks. So, I mean, right now that's the most we've spent or the most that I've spent on the car so far. Now, as far as putting it together, I want to say maybe two hours, if that. Uh, the instructions were super simple. Like we just pulled them out of the box. Everything was there. Use a couple of Allen keys. It's all good. And then all I had to do was take the like stock rails that were on top and just pop those off a lot easier than I thought. And then these just use those exact like holes or whatever. You just bolt them down and you're good to go. Uh, so yeah, like two hours in total. Not bad. So now the last exterior mod that I've done so far is the Victory 4x4 ladder. Again, I don't remember how much it costs because it was paired with the, uh, the roof rack, but this thing is a lifesaver. So I'm not the tallest dude in the world, right? I'm 5'7", I'm right? 5'8 on a good day. So- You're also on a hill right now. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I might look really short right now, but I swear to God, 5'7", 5'8"-ish, right around there. But like I said, this thing is a lifesaver. So when I do have the roof rack loaded up, I can just hop up here, literally get on top of the truck, walk on it. Like the, uh, the actual like construction of the, the roof rack is pretty solid. So I think it's made out of aluminum. So it's a lighter metal. But when I step on it, like on the rails and everything, I'm, I'm a pretty thick guy. I'm probably like 200 pounds. Those things don't bend, like it is solid. So climbing up there, grabbing all my gear, it's, it's legit trust me and then down the road if i want to get like what are they called rotopax uh fuel canisters or whatever this is a solid spot to mount those things if i'm doing something off-road or if i'm like i don't know the middle of highway 66 there's no gas stations like in sight i know that i'm set i got some you know cool looking fuel canisters that are way overpriced but they're awesome i can just have them right here so this was probably the easiest uh install or I guess I would say this was the easiest like build. So this slapping it together was maybe 30 minutes, but it was also the first time we had to do any drilling into the, like the actual truck. So I was a little nervous. Uh, we didn't do the best job, but it's on there. It's not going anywhere. It's, I mean, it's been on here for well over a year. I've climbed up this thing probably like a hundred times, uh, but yeah, it is legit. And as far as the internal or the inside of the car goes, the only thing that I've done so far is add a little button for the ditch lights. So the like wiring harness or whatever that I, I mentioned that we bought, it came with uh, this little button. It looked like something out of a movie, like a, like I'm gonna press this button, we're gonna blow up kind of thing. It was nuts, but there was no spot for me to like mount it inside. So for a couple of weeks, I just had this crazy wire just dangling like by the brake pedal. It kept coming unplugged, huge pain. So I went to uh, Cali Ray's LED and I found this little OEM looking button and it just says ditch lights, $15. It came in like 
two or three days. Super simple install. And now it looks pretty clean. All I gotta do is press this button and my crazy green ditch lights turn on. Uh, that's all I've done so far internally. So that's everything that I've done so far to the truck. I do have a running wish list, and the only thing that's stopping me right now is cash. It is what it is. So <laughs> first up, what I want to do is get some you know big, chunky tires, like off-road tires. Haven't gotten any yet. Right now, I'm rocking the uh, just like the stock tires. After that, probably want to get a lift, and then just because of you know being five eight, five seven. I'm probably gonna need some rock sliders, not only to like protect like you know the undercarriage a little bit, but also so I can step into my truck. I also have a really short dog, and uh, he has a little bit of trouble getting into the truck, you know, like father, like son. After that, uh, what I do want to do like really badly is do something about this valance. Honestly, what I'm thinking is just getting rid of it, getting like a high cut on the sides, big old bumper, and that might be it for now. So. Got a couple ideas floating around. There may be some big, uh, some big mods coming this summer. I got a couple things, you know, lined up. If it all goes through, then yeah, this summer we're gonna have a lot of Forerunner content, and it's gonna be awesome. So this is my daily driver. Before I got back from Iraq, I was driving a Nissan Altima. So huge, huge change, right? Little sedan up to this thing. Uh, overall. I love having this truck. Like I'm probably gonna have this for like 15, 20 years. It's also a Toyota, like this thing's a tank. It's gonna last forever. I'm stoked that I have this. I will say though, the gas mileage is killing me right now. This is March or actually April 1st, 2022. You guys know all across the country, gas prices are hectic. I checked today, I'm averaging 15 miles per gallon. That's rough. That's, that's rough these days. It costs like maybe 70, 80 bucks to fill up. So that's like the only downside to this. I do commute a lot. We're up in Maryland right now, but uh, I, I drive through DC to get to work. So that stop and go traffic just eats my fuel economy. Other than that though, I mean, this thing is perfect. Like I think out of my group of friends right now, I have the biggest car. So whenever we're doing anything on the weekend or just any kind of trip that we're planning, everybody throws their junk into my car. It's awesome. I love like being able to like just toss everything in there. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great car. So there it is, guys. One of our first non-bag related videos. We told you we were going to do it, and here it is. But that's it for today. Uh, if you guys like what you saw, you know, like the video, comment, subscribe. You guys know what to do. But until next time, we'll see you.